I move that the convention suspend the procedural rules. I move that all votes, all votes cast by delegates be reflected in the official record. And I move that Hillary Clinton be selected as the nominee of the Democratic Party for President of the United States. Senator Bernie Sanders making it official a little earlier this evening as the roll call of the states uh, was continuing, as the requisite number of delegates had been awarded and recorded to Hillary Clinton, Senator Sanders stepped up and made that announcement. So now Hillary Clinton is the nominee of the Democratic Party, a historic note uh, that uh, obviously merits some mention. So. The convention continues apace in Philadelphia, and uh, there are a variety of speakers who will come to the podium, but as they continue to talk to the Democratic faithful, we grab one of the delegates, nice enough to come up to our interview station in Convention Hall, an official Pennsylvania delegate for Hillary Clinton, Blake Rutherford, who is an attorney and moderator for Cousin O'Connor Public Strategies he uh, hosts a podcast entitled Road to the Oval Office. And uh, Blake, we really appreciate your time tonight here on Newsmax Prime. Thanks for having me. You bet, Blake. So uh, you tell us the story tonight. Obviously, it is a historic achievement. Hillary Clinton becoming the first female nominee uh, of a major party for the presidency. But beyond that tonight, Blake, in your opinion, what should we remember from day two of the Democratic National Convention? I think you're, you're exactly right, J.D. The, the most important thing to take away from tonight is, is the history. Hillary Clinton becoming the first major party uh, nominee as a female. And I think the second thing, J.D., is unity. Uh, Bernie Sanders moving uh, that she be nominated by acclamation and that the record reflect that all of the votes that cast at this convention were in support of her nomination. That was a big moment, and I think you've got a unified Democratic Party heading into day three of its convention. And uh, we invite uh, everyone, no matter their political persuasion, if you're watching us right now, give us a call. We'd love to take your question, hear your comment at 1-877-NEWSMAX. That's 1-877-639-7629. And of course, Blake, um, I used to serve in public office. You're there uh, with uh, Cousin O'Connor Public Strategies. We always need to have an answer. And I know that yesterday, in the wake of the revelation of the emails leaked uh, by WikiLeaks, uh, the, the DNC, and in particular, Mrs. Clinton's campaign manager, told CNN that the leaked emails were released by Russian hackers in order to create discord at the Democrat convention and help Donald Trump. Now, as you might expect, Mr. Trump uh, is dismissing that allegation, calling it laughable. Let's, uh, let's take a look at what Mr. Trump tweeted out. He wrote, the new joke in town is that Russia leaked the disastrous DNC emails, which should never have been written stupid because Putin likes me. Now, in all sincerity, Blake, no spin, just straight out. Do you really think those emails were released by Russian hackers? Well, look, J.D., I'm, I'm, I'm not nearly as close to the facts as, as many, many other people. I think the Clinton campaign is a very serious campaign. I think it, the fact that they have said that, they certainly wouldn't do that without some credible evidence. I think this needs to be investigated. We know this was a hack. Um, three months ago, we knew it was a hack. And so I think we have to investigate it. I think we have to get to the bottom of it and really understand what happened and the ramifications of what happened. Let's go to the phones now at 1-877-NEWS-MAX to Nolansville, Tennessee. That's where John is on the line. Hi, John. Hey, J.D. How you doing tonight, buddy? Appreciate you taking my call. You bet. Go right ahead, sir. All righty. I appreciate um Well, the fact of the matter is, is that, uh, you know, I can understand them wanting, like uh, Blake just said, to investigate, you know, who actually hacked in and released those emails. But at the same time, what I'm not seeing or I'm not seeing pushed into the forefront is them saying that they're going to investigate 
what was the content of those emails. In other words, the way that it was rigged where Hillary Clinton would get up there to be the predominant nominee. So, so John, what, what you're saying is all the attention on, quote, who done it takes away from what's in it, the emails themselves. What about that, Blake, in terms of being a misdirection, as John quite astutely uh, suspects? Well, I don't think it's necessarily a misdirection. I mean, certainly both things can be true, J.D. We need to investigate um, exactly who's behind this hack, and certainly the Clinton campaign has made clear who they think is behind the hack. The ramifications of the content of the emails are unfortunate. But let's, let's be clear about one thing. Hillary Clinton won this primary. Bernie Sanders has acknowledged she won this primary, and he has supported her candidacy. So I think, I think the, the content issue, while you know, unfortunate, um, I think is something that this party's willing to move past. Certainly Senator Sanders has indicated he's willing to move past it. Uh, let me just ask you something, Blake, because I hear the, uh, the chorus of cheers behind you. I saw something on the scoreboard or the big screen, Mothers of the Movement. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe this may be the time in the program now where the mothers of uh, of those who may have uh, may have perished uh, in in uh, encounters or shootings from the police may be highlighted tonight, and and I'm just wondering uh, because we heard from Ron Hosko prior to you coming on to have uh, Michael Brown's mother there from Ferguson. Do you believe this is really toward reconciliation, or does this help to fan the flames of? what we've sadly seen in this country over the past few weeks with directed attacks at law enforcement. I, I do not think this is, this is meant to, to serve as any directed attacks towards law enforcement. I'll be very interested to hear the content tonight, J.D., but I think this is absolutely about reconciliation. I think this is about an acknowledgement that we have challenges uh, in our law enforcement community and in our criminal justice system, and that our communities need to work together to solve those problems. So I think, again, consistent with the theme of this convention, you're going to hear reconciliation. You're also going to hear unity, unity that our communities, our police and the citizens in our communities need to come together and work together to, to solve these challenges. In retrospect, perhaps it was an early warning, but former Attorney General Eric Holder, who during Black History Month in February of 2009, having been confirmed as Attorney General just a matter of weeks before, offered the public pronouncement that Americans are, quote, cowards when it comes to discussing race. Let's listen to the former attorney general in his assessment of the proceedings going on right now in Philadelphia. Despite the fiction and the fear mongering you've heard from the other party's nominee, violent crime has gone down since President Obama took office. As president, Hillary will go even farther. Uh, I, I just have to, uh, I'm, I'm going to try to be very diplomatic, Blake, and I'll take it in the historical vein. I believe it was Mark Twain who said, statistics don't lie, but liars use statistics. You and I know those figures uh, cited by Mr. Holder don't bear up with the facts, and to try to ignore or blissfully bypass the horrific shootings of police officers over the last 10 days is something that from my vantage point, is fantasy. Now tell me why, that, why I'm wrong. Well, I, I, I don't think anybody's trying to bypass that. Certainly those tragedies have been acknowledged. They've been acknowledged across the entire political spectrum, and they'll be acknowledged at this convention. President Obama appeared at the funeral of those sling officers in Dallas. He gave a phenomenal speech that I think will continue to reverberate in, in throughout our political system. But I think at this convention, it's going to be a topic of conversation, and it should be a topic of conversation. To the point the president made in his pursuit of gun control, saying it was easier for a teenager to get a Glock than a library book. Uh, was that not rhetorical uh, exaggeration at that memorial service in Dallas? Got about a minute left. Yeah, I mean, I mean, certainly the, you know, the rhetoric em employed by the president, I think, was was very powerful. He's certainly trying to make a point about the prevalence of guns and the ease with which guns are accessible. And 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 his decision is that he wants to do something 
about that. And so I think it's an appropriate comment and I think it's an appropriate conversation in the context of these tragedies that we talk about accessibility to guns and the relationship that guns are having in our but, communities. But in closing, and, and just, to, just to get our arms doing. around this, it is not easier to get a Glock than to get a library book for teenagers in American cities. Certainly you can agree with me on that. Well, I mean, I mean, look, I, I, I think I think the point is this. I think the point is that that that, quite frankly, guns are accessible and to some they're too accessible and it's too easy to get them. And I think if we're going to deal with that, we have to acknowledge Fair the enough. ease. With I, which I hear you, Blake, can and I appreciate that. But you don't you, you don't abuse the First Amendment to try and get rid of the second. Blake Rutherford, thanks so much. Back with Dan Stein after this.